Good morning, everyone. We're going to give it a couple more minutes before we get started, just to make sure everybody can get here. And I think we should start. Yeah, probably. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Finnegan Butterfield. I'm from ABA's Indie Commerce. I am today joined by my colleague, Marie Sampson, who's also going to be presenting, along with Kenny Breckner as our panelist from Devony Dokes and Garrett Bookstore. Um, today's webinar, we're gonna be talking about institutional business with schools and nonprofits. Uh, before we begin, um, I just want to let all attendees know you are currently in listen-only mode. I cannot hear you if you are talking. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please put them into the Q&A section, and they will be answered at the end of the webinar. We're going to reserve about 15 minutes for Q&A, so we will be answering questions around that time. Um, so let's start. Uh, so, like I said, today we're going to be talking about the various ways you can use your Indie Commerce or Indie Light website to host and promote institutional business with schools and other nonprofits. Uh, these are suggested and optional ways that you can partner with these institutions to better connect with your community, promote literacy and education, support your local schools and libraries, and further distribute books throughout your community. The main topics we'll be covering today in this webinar are partnering with schools and nonprofits to help supply books to the community, partnering with schools and nonprofits to secure books for their institutions, and how to further connect with these institutions and the communities using your website. Uh, some information shared will be exclusively for Indie Commerce sites, but all sections will be highlighted to, as to whether they are for Indie Commerce sites exclusively or not. Uh, and then all information regarding Indie Light sites can be performed on Indie Commerce sites, but it's sectioned for clarity. Uh, I'd also like to give our panelists, Kenny um, and Murray, a couple seconds to introduce themselves. So uh, Murray and Kenny, whenever you would like. I, I guess I'll go first. Yep, please. Uh, what, 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. My name is Murray Sampson. Uh, I've been with Indie Commerce uh, since May. Uh, previously, I worked at uh, Secret Garden Books in Seattle. Started working uh, remotely for ABA in May after moving to rural Washington. Uh, so it's it's been a bit of a change going from the store side to the support side, uh, but it's a uh, pleasure to be able to help uh, all our stores. So I'll pass along to Kenny now. Hi, I'm uh, Kenny Breckner of Devaney Doak and Garrett Booksellers. We're in a uh, <clears throat> store in Central Maine. First, I'd like to take one second to commend and thank and recognize Geetha um, and the whole IC Commerce team for the incredible job they've done throughout, not only throughout the pandemic, but and for their expertise, but for the good spiritedness with which they've approached everything. So thank you, thank you guys. Um, yeah, I know I've been, this is our 30th year, uh, about my 28th of being a school specialist. Um, we're general independent, but uh, if you ask me, am I glad during this pandemic that I had an emphasis on school business as opposed to events, the answer would be yes. So I do think this is a really important topic and I'm looking forward to today's seminar. So thank you. Thank you so much, Kenny. I'm going to let Marie take it over from here for a second. All right, so I'm going to take a moment to uh, talk about partnering with schools and nonprofits to supply books to the community. So this is working with schools, nonprofits uh, to get books into the hands of, of their programs, uh, their students or people they work with. Uh, there's many ways to do this. Um, one idea is stores can do this through membership programs. And uh, many stores have already worked out doing a store-wide loyalty program. So this would be a similar thing, but it'd be targeted at schools. Uh, one example would be if there is a school book club uh, that gets a discount at your store. Um, you could do, say, a certain percentage off all their orders. Uh, for any commerce sites, a way to do this would be to create a custom role for any book club members. So their their account when they logged into the site would be associated with this book club membership role and automatically get their discount or whatever other bonus programs you're doing. Um, you could do a discount code using the coupon module and that you'd provide to the school, which they would give to their members to use. Uh, there's also the option to do a custom checkout pane. So uh, members of the program would type in their information in a, a separate box. It would pop up on the order screen when you view their order, telling you that they're part of the member and you could process it post checkout. So apply the discount prior to charging their order out. Um, Indie Light sites have that discount, co uh, discount code option as well. Um, you could also create a book list to point them to you so that you know, okay, this is a member who's buying off their, their book list for the book club. Um, you could also just keep do old fashioned pen and paper, have a list of members that you uh, cross reference as you do their orders and process them. Um, and I will pass it back to Finn now. Thank you. Another way that might come as a surprise is virtual book fairs. It is actually entirely possible to host virtual book fairs on your Indie Commerce or Indie Light website. Some of our members, including Hickleby's, Anderson's, and Copperfields, have started constructing and hosting book fairs on their websites, utilizing a combination of our features that we offer. When choosing how to set up your book fairs, you just have some important decisions to make, like will you be crediting the school for purchases of any books on your site, or do you want to limit it down to, to, to specific titles? Um, like, are you hosting a book fair on your entire website, or is it just a specific genre or titles that you want to highlight and give credit for? Um, also, do you want teachers to have wish lists for parents to buy for their students' classroom? Do you need a way to quickly separate book fair orders from your regular orders so that way when they come in to your order feed on your website, you can tell them apart from other regular orders that are pushed through by customers? And how are you going to be getting these books to the students? Um, are you going to be doing school drop-off, store pickup, shipping, things like that? Um, these are all just uh, several things to consider. 
Um, there are several ways to customize your book fair to fit your store and the participating schools. Uh, but right now we're going to look at an, an example online book fair that we've created on one of our sample uh, sites to explain kind of the core components and the features involved. So give me just a moment, please. I'm going to go ahead and hand this on over to Murray. And Murray, go ahead. You are good whenever you are ready. What I've done is created a just very basic, this is, you know, the most basic rough outline of the possibilities. Uh, we had, you know, Miss Honeywell here after taking over from the trench bowl decided to have a book fair. So here I've made just a really basic page. Um, again, just as demonstration purposes, I wanted to give sort of a skeleton here that you'd fill out to suit your needs. Um, it's got just a little info. Uh, I went ahead and put, when I made it, this is an important thing to, to consider is how are you going to manage the discount? Because if you're doing a whole school book fair, you don't want someone to be buying a net discount book and then expecting to credit the school necessarily, maybe you do, um, but many stores would, would not want to do that. So uh, this is just a note to consider adding if you have any restrictions on what they're doing. Um, and what I've done here is, <clears throat> excuse me, I've created just some book lists similar to the front page book lists that are available by default uh, so that they're, you know, again, I just, generic skeleton for you to look at as an example. Uh, I was doing these sort of thematically and this way there is a quick view of the list and then a more link that you can click to go on through and see a longer list. So if you want to have say a, a list of 20 books in this category, you can put those in without having to have 20 books loading every time on this page. Um, and I'll do a quick overview of how I did that. First, I took the front page book list view and I made a copy of it. So in your views page, there's uh, this option to clone a view. And so I, I just found the front page book list. I made a copy of it to give me the basis. Um, so this is how I'd recommend to do it. And I've changed a number of things, the display name, the title that shows up to the customer, um, the node ID it's drawing from, which is to say which book list is it looking at. Um, and then I've also uh, added in this, this handy thing, this is the path to the book list so that I can add a link, that more link to it. Um, and, and we'll of course be sending out help docs to go through this a bit more thoroughly. Um, and I've just done this three times so far to create three different blocks that I can tie those three different book lists into. Um, and uh, then the second half is you have to tell it not to put those on the front page anymore because by default, if you're copying that front page book list, it will show up on only the front page, which you don't want. You actually want it instead. I'll take a look at this. I find my book fair uh, book list block. Instead, you want to go in here and tell it, okay, I do want it in the content of my theme, but I only want it to show up on my Crunch and Hall Elementary School book fair. Um, so that that way, someone's not going to accidentally find your, your category book list for Crunch and Hall Elementary School on the front page, or if they're navigating to your events page, it's not accidentally going to pop up where you don't want it. You're going to limit it here. And that's how you get it to go right here. Um, and since many of you use different themes, I will just show you a handy, quick way to always reference where you're putting it. There's going to be this demonstrate block regions that clicks through, gives you a little map. So I know if I'm going to put it if I label it region first, it's going to show up here. Uh, if I put it in promoted, et cetera, um, like that. And that's going to work for any theme to give you an idea of, uh, of how it works. So I'm going to pass on to Finn to go through this. Again, we'll send out some more information about how to work with views like this and how to create you know, basic 
page and add it to them. Real quick, Murray, did you want to show the coupon that you made or was I completely oh. forgot about that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you pass the screen back to me, I will do that. No problem. <laughs> Give me one moment, please. All right. Um, oh, there you go. Did that do it? There we go. Yep. Okay. So you, uh, if you don't have the coupon module enabled, you'll have to add us. If you don't add it, so you'll if you don't see coupons here, you'll have to send us an email to get it set up. Um, but what I've done for the coupon code is uh, I've made this coupon that I've called Frenchham Elementary Book Fair. And I've made a code for it that um, that schools can use. They can give to their parents to type in to make sure it's credited. I've done a zero discount because this is not actually a coupon code. This is simply for tracking purposes uh, on the store's end. So you don't want to be necessary. You don't want to necessarily give a discount unless that's part of your policy. But in the case of this uh, fictional book fair, I've done a zero balance. Um, I'll run through the settings on it real quick. So when you make it, you'll give it a name. You'll give it a code. You make sure it's active. And since in this fictional book fair, I'm giving credit for whatever's on the site, it's going to go on the order subtitle, subtotal, excuse me. And then since it's a book fair and I'm only going to run it for two weeks or two weeks or so, whatever your uh, your book fair date is for that, I can restrict it, excuse me, restrict it by date using this checkbox, set my start date, my end date. Um, you want to make sure both of these are blank because you don't want to do a maximum number of redemptions necessarily. Um, and this maximum number of redemptions per user uh, because of uh, the way the website treats people who are shopping while not logged in, this can potentially cause problems with people being able to apply the coupon. The other handy thing I did is I changed the line item so that instead of just showing up as coupon on an order page, it will say this order supports whatever book fair. And then I added a message so that when the coupon is applied, there's a little pop-up that that uh, in a green box that tells the user, the parent or student who's shopping, that you know, gives them a little thank you message for supporting the book fair. And now when they place their order, what it's going to look like is um, here. Uh, you will see uh, it's a little it's a little subtle, but there's the line item here, and um, so that's how you'll spot it. There's you can also use coupons to apply rules. So I could, for example, have any order that's applied to that coupon. Instead of going to pending, it would then move to a custom status. Uh, for example, some stores will have a status specifically for their school, um, school and library or institutional business. So it could go straight there so that it can easily be found by whatever staff is focusing on the book fair versus falling into the general order queue where perhaps someone misses that it's a book fair order and ships it or does something that that kind of messes up the flow so that's another advantage of coupons is being able to do rules but here i think is the most important thing is you can go up to store there are reports for coupons and it's this coupon usage report and what that does is you can set a start date i placed that test order yesterday um, so i'm actually going to put it on the 19th, just to be sure I catch it. Um, you can select what order. Uh, so you could see, oh, I want to find out who placed an order, but then decided not to and canceled it or um, et cetera. I know this order is impending. So for the sake of demonstration, I'll use that. And then you see here, it gives the order number, gives the code, the date, et cetera. And this handy summary here is, it's just, it's really nice because then you know how much to use to calculate your, um, if you give the store credit or the, excuse me, the school credit with which to shop, you'll know quickly what total to use to calculate that number. And then again, you can create 
custom uh, reports, which is, again, another nice thing about having this code to help you track things. Uh, so that, that covers that code, I think, for now. And again, there's help documents. We're putting together uh, relevant help documents to send out. Uh, and now I will officially pass this back to Finn. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Um, and since this was a live demo, these are just two other samples from other sites, uh, one from Anderson's and one from Copperfields. And these are way that they have uh, built uh, the, the nonfiction fund is similar to the book list that we built on the sample site. Uh, where this is, it is pulling up a preview of what is on the book list, and then the stop or the uh, the 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 top example is a feed showing categories. Um, up next, I want to talk about partnering with schools and nonprofits uh, for their institution, and these are ways in which you can partner with schools and nonprofits to help get books onto their shelves or into their hands. Um, and a way to do this is a subscription service. A subscription service is basically, uh, it can be a way to help supply books to classrooms and libraries in bulk at a discounted rate to the customer. Um, this can be a situation where the school pays for the membership for the entire year up front uh, or is charged on a monthly basis. Uh, and I really want to let Kenny uh, have some time here to explain his subscription service called Ahead of the Program. So Kenny, whenever you are ready. Sure. Uh, we have two subscription services. Our main one is called Ahead of the Curve. Um, the idea of the subscription service, the the idea of the subscription service is to serve uh, our library customers, primarily our school library customers. I've also used it for some public libraries as well. Um, there are a lot of benefits to a subscription program um, in the sense that otherwise when you're dealing with a purchase order from a school um, you have to bill against the purchase order until the money is used up and you're at grave risk of losing that of having that money frozen or or, or lost by the school at the same time school librarians need to keep money open to purchase things throughout the year the idea of subscription program is to have the have the school the school library use their book budget money um, to make a single purchase up front or to add to it during the course of the year. Um, it makes the accounting on our side vastly easier. Um, so the money has been turned over; it can't be seized to be used for fuel or you know other things that the school might find themselves in need of during the year. Um, uh, so the the head of the curve subscription program is basically a, a, a product that's purchased by the school build up front um, that we we provide a bill for and then the, their the purchase is posted in against their account um, that they have a special you know account for within our point of sale system um, and um, the it's the head of the curve is is fairly flexible we do a lot of things to support the teachers they have they can say uh, one thing that we do that's been uh, is that we ask them to pro to send in any orders that they have through in e-commerce through having a specialized account there, which is an enormous time saver for us. Uh, if, if you've been around a while, you can probably think back to the bad old days where school librarians would give you paper lists with really dubious ISBN, ten digit ISBNs, many of which had a, a bad digit. Uh, a lot of which were out of print um, and it was incredibly labor intensive. So I train up all our teach all our librarians to use our website to process their orders, which is an enormous time saver. Um, but uh, so uh, you, we have we basically break down for them, you know, various ways that we can that we can that, that they want us to fill their account. Some of them just say anything that comes in that looks great, throw it in my box, Kenny. And I say sure. Um, uh, one thing we use the the site for all the time is to uh, someone will, uh, one of my uh, librarians will contact me and say uh, we've got this poetry in the library. The last thing that we brought in new was in 1946. Um, nothing is going out. The kids are bored to death. They want to read some poetry. What do you recommend that kids might actually read? Um, and I'll just create a private web page using making a quick book list on IndieCommerce and send that 
private page over to the librarian who will then generally order everything on it and put it against their ahead of the curve account. Um, the, the other beauty of the subscription service is that um, school accounting departments recognize subscriptions as a product, meaning if you said to a business office, uh, I'd like to create a tab for this school library, um, why not give me $2,000? Uh, the answer would be no, but due to things like the Junior Library Guild, um, it's recognized as a product that a school is willing to purchase. Um, so we built our program around the fact that subscription services are fall within the aegis of the business department is something that they can deal with. Uh, uh, and uh, along those lines, we also offer something called the Leading Edge Library subscription, which is more, more like the Junior Library Guild, um, where we supply the books um, to the to the school libraries. Um, yeah, that's that's it over there. Um, and what we do, with, the way that works for us is that we come up with an average price for, let's say, let's say it's a high school library um, and they, they're getting young adult books. You know, we come up with a price which includes their discount of, say, $15 as an average median price. Um, so if they're getting five books a month, they, it costs them $75 a month. And then they provide me with information. We want one graphic novel. We want what we want one non-fiction book we want three fiction books and these are areas of interest for our students um when i have that information i simply pick out the five each month and put it aside for them it works uh, very much like junior library guild in that regard but it's more personalized and they um, and it's actually a better deal for them so those are that's the nuts and bolts of of our subscription services Finny. thank you so much kenny i really appreciate it Alrighty, let's go back to okay. Uh, a way to integrate the subscription services with your indie commerce site, much like Kenny did, is to create the subscription service as a product to sell on your website. Even with Indie Lite, while you can't create custom products, the store can still post information and contact links regarding subscription services, much like Kenny did. Uh, for Indie Lite stores, you can create a page that hosts all the information on a subscription service. So you would create it like a regular informational page as you would anything else on your website. And then you can enter all the information about these programs on the page or through images you upload to the page. And then from here, you can either tell customers to contact your store through that page, or you can create a new contact form for subscription service inquiries. Basically, this will create another kind of contact us uh, type of function where customers will be able to write to a specific uh, email address for subscription services so that you know that these are exclusively questions surrounding that topic. Uh, and then for indie commerce stores, you can also create your subscription services as a custom product with whatever fields, description, price, and images you feel are appropriate. You can also charge these customers for these services on a timed schedule using saved credit card profiles. I do want to say this is not automated. We, The system will not automatically charge customers on your behalf on a timed schedule. You will have to go in and charge the customers on your own end. Um, and then these are just two examples of what a subscription service could look like as a custom product on your website. We have one from Kepler's on the left, and we have one from Bookmarks NC on the right. Uh, the one on the left, you can see they've separated it into tiers of uh, based on dollar amount and with the corresponding rewards that come with the subscription services. And on the right, you can see that this one is more, has a lot of fields, it looks very customizable. Um, so you can upload these custom products however you feel would best reflect your store's interests and your subscription service. And then we are going to finish it up by talking about for the connecting with nonprofits and the community. And I'm going to go ahead and let Marie and Kenny take this one whenever you two are ready. Uh, so Kenny, do you want to tell a little bit about how you do your um, 
your book review program first? Sure. Um, we we do all kinds of community outreach to to um, some of which uh, you know uh, some of which is transactional and some of which is not for literacy programs. Um, I do want to I do want to before preface talking about some of these uh, initiatives and things that we do um, that if you if you're going to work with schools I believe with all my heart that um, you need to build broad and durable relationships with these institutions um, uh, that you can't do too much uh, community building and friend building and partner building within the institutions. Um, because if your your relationships are built or uh, depend upon a single individual in a district, uh, and that individual moves or retires, uh, things can go badly. The more that you are an institution yourself in working with these institutions, the better chance you have of carrying your business over time. And secondly, when absolutely crucial things happen, um, you are not necessarily in the room. You know, uh, where, where there's there's a giant school grant to be determined. Um, where it's going to go, who the vendor is going to be, um, and there's an administrator who says, "Hey, what about using Amazon?" You need friends in that room to say, "Hey, how about no? <laughs> how about keeping the money local? How about using it at this store that's 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 been there for us all these times?" So uh, I can't stress enough that I, I think um, all the outreach that we do has been we've been rewarded for uh, in a partnering way many many times. Uh, in fact, very recently. Anyway, so um, we have this pro. I've always wondered about creative ways to use ARCs, and we've done all kinds of ARC review projects out in the schools. Um, and one thing that we did fairly recently was we used the little library concept um, and partnered with the school district to have the actually built it, have students build in the libraries um, these small ARC houses that were put in the school libraries that we provided with the ARCs. And I talked to Gita about ways to possibly have the kids put comments on them, to put their reviews online, so that they could have a forum for sharing their reviews with the other students, and that I, you know, I could interact with. Um, and that's been that that's been great. That's been a great program. All the libraries in the Mount Blue School District have little libraries in them, filled with, that we supply with the ARCs, and that have their own pages on our site. Um, where the kids post their reviews. So that's that's been really terrific. Um, uh, and then uh, I'm a big believer in using wish lists and working with our partners. All of our school libraries have their own wish lists, um, which allow community members to buy books for them that they're in want of. Um, and I'll show you another good example of how to use wish lists in working with, a, 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 with, <clears throat> with nonprofit partners. Um, there's this really cool, um, new program that has come to our area called Bring Books to Life. It's basically a reading group that's that's a partnership of Head Start um, and literacy volunteers. It's run by Head Start and by some retired education specialists from the local university that have Head Start parents um, that, <clears throat> who are provided with artifacts, meaning books, um, to read to their children and where they're trained in, in uh, pre-literacy education. Uh, to make the most of it, and it's absolutely bloomed during the pandemic, um, where there used to be 25 families, and we used to we would get 25 copies of a single book each month to provide for, has grown to over 50, um, and the funding uh, the funding for the program did not cover the increase uh, in the program. So we've been working with them um, to come to use uh, wish list to allow community members to purchase extra copies of the book to fill the funding gap, uh, as well as using our site to provide uh, gift certificate purchasing where a, a community member can purchase a certificate on behalf of Bring Books to Life to give them the extra buying power so that they can buy the books that they need each month. So uh, those are some examples of ways to, uh, to you know, to use our website resources to, to help uh, for fundraising for existing literacy programs that we provide the books for. There's also, um, I'll, I'll pick up from Kenny now, there's also a number of things that once circumstances are, are a little more normal again, uh, you can use your website to uh, do things like um, promote or organize classroom visits to your school. Uh, you could have 
school specific author visits which you tie in with your regular events um, you could even uh, if you have the space coordinate for small events that the school is running and uh, have them in as as a community partner and again these are these are all things that you don't necessarily use the the e-commerce side of your website but our you know calendaring and the event uh, program and uh, promotional side of the website more of the content side yeah i would mention too you know the you sponsoring fun contests the literacy ba literacy based contests we had yeah write a valentine for blobfish you know <laughs> um and we we post all the we post all the contest winners or on our site we do all kinds of you know we're i think we're running one with new commons coming up about um if you could pick one dead author to write a, an introduction to 1984 who would it be <laughs> and asking people to, to write it in their voice you know and there are people getting around that and when you when you post this on your site you're becoming a community landing page you're getting pressed for that you're drawing people you know you can use your website in really effective ways to to connect with the community and and to draw traffic to your site um and to have fun you know so all these things and before we wrap up here, I actually want to show the ARC House reviews that Kenny does. Uh, Kenny, can you remind me where they are on your site? I'm so sorry. Oh, it's under right. community. Um, and then, yeah, right there. Okay. So basically what Kenny has done here is, oh, well, I should make sure that it's showing you right uh, There you can see. actually see, oh, yeah. Sorry. You can there see what the, the house that the kids built. Those are kind of cool. But. Yeah. So this is the one that you put into libraries. And then the reviews for these arcs go on your website. And if we, let's try Mount Blue High School. If we go in here, we can see that high schoolers have been posting comments on your website saying what they think of the arcs that you've handed them and then can you remind me how you moderate this chat real quick well under the there's a comments bar um you know in the administrative area you just hit comments and it shows you all things that are pending um and you just enable them you know basically if you, if you want to pass it on or if it's a dubious spam thing you just zap it you know it's pretty it doesn't take much time it's pretty easy to do mm -hmm. Okay. Um, other than that, uh, we still have some time left. So if we have any questions, uh, we would be happy to take yes. those. Uh, Finn, um, we, we have some questions, but before okay. we get to that, just one thing. Uh, Kenny, yeah. so you had mentioned, I believe, that um, Bring Books to Life is a program that boomed during the pandemic. So in general, your uh, the programs that you run with schools and libraries have they been affected by the pandemic? Um, yes, in fact, my school business has risen dramatically to some extent. Like all my school, you know, I the way I felt. I mean, it's something I felt good about. But um, you know, when things hit the fan, you know, the our schools, you know, we've we've done so much outreach I try, I, i've tried to make it very clear how much we love and care about working with our with our schools and our you know and they they were there for our store in a huge way um i just had every single library in the mount blue district committed to giving us their entire school book budget uh for here as well as um one thing i recommend everyone check out is that there's something like ppp for for schools that I haven't seen a lot of press about, but um, our di if the district did not furlough um, its employees uh, during the latter state during the latter stage of last the last school year, if it kept it open, it became ed eligible for more so for some federal grant money for that fact, um, and the the grant money is designated in or can be designated by the school for book purchasing, and we've seen. Um, we were given a huge grant, you know, filling a huge grant for our local district um, uh, for that, you know, because of that, because of the pandemic, for the, because of that pandemic money. So I have been riding the wave of trying to keep ahead of like a massive influx of, of grant orders. Um, 
Uh, yeah, so our our institutional business has has risen dramatically during the pandemic. No question, Gita. Okay. And uh, related to that, another question: uh, How do you get kids to actually do the review? I give away ARCs and almost never get a review back, and this is for adults too. Um, I really, I, I think the, it's being done at the ground a little bit by the librarians. I mean, we try and. I wrote up um, a heartwarming appeal to the kids as far as that went to, to be posted on the ARC houses. And I try and be chatty with them. And I, you know, and we, we know, you know, I know many of them through our earlier outreach in the elementary school ARC programs. I, I came, to, I used to go to the classrooms all the time and, and do bark, do month long ARC review programs. So, a lot of the kids that are in high school now have been part of our programs in the past and we've been responsive for it. And, and then there's just the the librarians promoting it, um, you know, all that just, in, you know, just kind of connection, enthusiasm, social stuff is really what drives it, you know. And do you use Google Analytics to monitor the traffic? Have you find any interesting trends? Um, I'm not great at Google Analytics. I should use it more than I do. I mean, I poke around and I look at what's getting traffic and stuff. Um, I don't have any like deep insights into like how to convert that into brilliant marketing schemes or anything. I'm just, I'm just kind of poking around and getting a, a feel for what's working and what's not. You know, um, you know, I look for spikes or when we try something, I look to see how it's being responded to. Nothing fancier than that, I'm afraid. Okay. Um, Finn, we have a question from Mary. Uh, so this is, um, our store uses book fairs as a fundraiser opportunity for local schools in which they receive a check for 20% from all book fair specific purchases. Shoppers don't receive a discount. Could we use a coupon to keep track of this? You absolutely could. Okay, oh, sorry. Murray, did you want to take it or do you want me to? Oh, I can take it. Yeah, actually, um, you can. It, you can have the coupon code, and when you create that code, you simply give it a zero in the discount. Uh, it, when you're running through the steps, it asks you, how much do you want to discount? And if you type in zero, it gives you that, um, that nice line item and the ability to run the coupon report against it without actually discounting for the shopper. So it becomes simply a code that allows you to track the order more, uh, more readily. Yeah. And um, I, I don't know if uh, Kepler's is still doing it. Uh, Finn, if you have Kepler's site open, um, Kepler's used to use the affiliate program. Um, so as an affiliate, uh, the schools could be an affiliate of the store. And so that way they can set it up to get 20% discount and the shoppers still won't get a discount, but the, um, and there are good reports. If you use affiliate program, there are very good useful reports for the affiliate program also. That's another option. Um, there's another question. Um, I believe in this goes back to one of your slides about uh, Kepler's, about the view. Um, would you mind explaining a little more about the feed feature shown as an example from another bookstore. So uh, Jessica, I'm not sure what this question refers to. Uh, I, if I, you prefer, we can unmute you and if you want to uh, explain the question to us. Jessica, you're unmuted. You may have to unmute yourself on the other end. Okay, thanks. Um, I think I don't remember exactly what slide it was, but there was like you had a little feed that had the little like autographed books section and uh, something I, else. Let me see. Hold on. Let's see here. Is it? Yeah, that one. This one. Okay. So yeah, no problem. Uh, it's the top one, right? Yeah. Okay. So basically what this store did is they first, they not step one, they built book lists for each of these categories. And they did so by going to content, add page and added a book list. They built all of those. And then next, these are images they made on their own, um, but they made all these images, they made them the same size and same theme. 
And then step number three is what they did was they added an image field to these pages. So that way it had a, an image attached to it. And then once they have the book list set up with all the books in it, along with an image in it, what they did was they went in to their views by going to structures, views, and then they created something very similar to a book list where they are looking specifically for when you go into the filter criteria and the content and everything, you're going to be selecting content, show, and it's going to be your image that you inserted. For, so for these, when they inserted the image, they uh, named the image field in the product uh, book fair image. And so when they went into their views to pull these images so that they can display them in this feed, they said they pulled content, book fair images, and that is essentially telling the system that you are pulling images that are book fair images and displaying all of them on this page with links to the book list. Does that make a little more sense? I think, yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, great. Jessica, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Okay, we will great. have uh, instructions for this. Um, yeah, we can we can write down like uh, Pin can uh, create a help uh, help doc with quick steps on how to create these. Um, mm -hmm. There are help documents available for different parts of the views, but nothing that pulls everything together in a way that you're seeing it on the screen. So definitely, uh, we can create one for that. Yeah, and we will share it with the recording of this webinar. Um, so one more thing, let's look at it, is um, um, the site that Mary had used, are you able to go back to the coupon configuration page since we have a few minutes left? I thought that is a good page to demo to see all the options that are available. Sure, Mary, I'm going to hand this back over to you since you had it nice and open. Yeah, the store configuration coupon. Oh, yeah. Things. Yeah. So you want the yeah. coupon. Yeah, there is the another side, powerful the tool right there. Ready. The yeah. under configurations. Yep. Yeah. So which uh, which specifically yeah. just run through string. what the options are here? The query string, that is actually oh, a yes. very powerful tool. That was actually that was on my list. And thank you for the reminder, Geetha, because um, that that is it's important uh this makes an easy way for the school to automatically have uh their their uh i, I want to say shoppers but the, their parents the parents students whoever is going to go in and shop this book fair very easy way for them to have a link that automatically applies their code so this query string parameter that's uh what that means is you set a word that you can then include in whatever link you send them. So for example, this first half just goes to the front page. Um, but if I add a question mark, coupon equals, and then my, my code I've created, it automatically applies that coupon. So that would look like, um, uh, let's see. So it would look like that. So it, to, for this particular book fair, I want to send them straight to their book fair page and I want to automatically apply their code. So it is yourwebsite.com slash your book page, uh, your book fair page that you've created. And then you just add this little question mark. And what that does is trigger the system to look at what's next. Oh, sorry. As a, as a, um, instructions basically so it's saying okay you're gonna put this coupon called french and fair 20 um and then that as soon as they navigate there it's gonna be a uh, part of their browsing se uh, sorry their shopping session and uh, get applied automatically at checkout thank you and um also another thing that we can demo now is uh could you also show them how to create the contact us 
the different contact us emails and how to set it up. Let's say if a store is promoting um, the subscription service and if there is a contact us form for questions regarding the subscription service. Um, I think it structure is under structure. Can you, yeah, structure contact, yeah. So this contact us form is available on both Indie Commerce and Indie Light sites. It gives you an option, like it's a feature where you can add a contact us link on your website. You don't have to publicly display your email address. So they just, when the customer wants to ask a question, they just type in the question, say submit, and you can configure it to go to certain emails in your among your staff. If it's about subscription, the email can go to that one staff. And you can also have an auto reply. So this is like an easy way for your customers to contact you. Um, and also you don't have to publicly make your emails uh, publicly visible on the site. And you can create as many forms as you want for different purposes. Yeah, I'll give this back to Finn, um, unless there's another portion uh, any of you can think of for me to bring up right now while I'm on the site. Okay. 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 Um, I think that should do it for today. I know we're ending a little early, but if there's any last minute questions, we're happy to take them. Um, Oh, that, that was a great um, presentation, um, Finn and Marie. And thank you, uh, Kenny, uh, for all of your thoughtful ideas and mm -hmm. your passion for working with schools, libraries, and other organizations. Uh, thank you so much for being uh, part of this uh, webinar. And mm -hmm. this webinar was recorded. So uh, tomorrow you will all get a follow up email, and that will have a link to the recording. And we will also put together, we will also provide you with the uh, slides from the PowerPoint. If you're interested, you can download them. And definitely we will work on those help documents that go with uh, what was discussed in this webinar today. And thanks everyone. Thank, thank you, so you all much. for coming. Yeah. And thank you so much, Kenny. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Vinny and Mary and Keith. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.